All right, welcome to video how to draw a perfect cube with no horizon line or vanishing points using the ellipse method. This is from Thomas Glenn, artist, fine art. I'm studying some perspective course with him and I'm gonna show you basically what this first lesson is about. This is just fundamental. I'm using a Tombow N75, so it's light gray. And I'll do the first phase of drawing in with this marker, no erasing, and then I'll darken it up with a red Prismacolor. And first thing I am going to do for this ellipse method is draw an ellipse. We're basically gonna construct a cylinder using the ellipse as a geometric tool using principles of horizon lines and vanishing points, and then build a perfect cube construction. So find the center, and I'm gonna draw the baseline of this ellipse. This is gonna be, I am thinking about eight inches. So my hand spans about eight inches here. So my ellipse is gonna go here. This is the major axis of the ellipse. I'm doing all this freehand from perception. That line is a little tilted. I'm standing behind the camera, so I'm going to crouch down a slight bit and correct this line. I'm moving it up an eighth inch. I like to show my errors so you don't think I'm some kind of like superhuman. All right, so that's a little bit better. I'm gonna come up here. Let's, uh, let's just get a basic dimension. I'm gonna do a slightly over a third of the entire length of that major axis of the lips for this minor axis. So all I'm doing right now is just constructing an ellipse freehand. And this takes a bit of practice in, in itself because this has to be perfectly halfway. I'm not using a ruler. I'm just judging my eye. I think that looks an eighth inch, 16th inch long. So if lines get up or down as eighth or 16th of an inch, it's gonna throw things off. I'm still crouching down. I am just gonna construct a key rectangle for my ellipse. I know that there's people who draw an ellipse in one second using momentum techniques. And that's actually good practice too for a quick sketch, but I'm just gonna show you another technique using just construction drawing. And you could obviously use a ruler, compass, and draw all that perfectly or just computer program. Why am I doing this the hard way? For eye training, and I like working with my hands without a computer, without digital format. So there's a basic rectangle. I'm gonna show you how I find the parts of the ellipse. You can use this technique. Basically, I know that this top part is gonna be pretty flat and this is a quarter, so one, two, three, four, and this point is gonna come slightly inside of that dimension. I could divide this into thirds, and I know that there's gonna be, I'm kind of doing a variation of the eight point construction method of the circle. And the same thing here, that's about a quarter, and then that's a third, so I know that the ellipse, I'm just trying to find these eight points. I'm just gonna go ahead and visually copy this point into all these other quadrants of this rectangle. And now I'm crouching down with my arm extended, standing behind the camera. It's gonna be tricky, but I'll give it a go. I'm not gonna do this super fast, but I'll do it at kind of like medium slow speed. I know that this line is going to be fairly flat. Sorry, I'm breathing right into the microphone here. And then it abruptly turns down. I mean, drawing a perfect ellipse freehand is, is pretty 
hard. I mean, I'm just doing my best. It's obviously not going to be amazing, but best as I can do using kind of these construction techniques and then quickly drawing it freehand within there. So this is overall about, I got a ruler here. So that is a little under seven inches. Not done yet. Let me get this last little section of the lips. And again, we're trying to draw a perfect cube in perspective. So I'm just trying to get this first little part as good as I can. Again, with the marker, um, sort of seeing like that one's a little, so this feels more like the halfway of there. So this center is there. All right, so the next thing you do after this is you create a plane that's gonna go back in space. I am going to select this as my front facing plane. And um, once you get that drawn, you basically use these tangents on the outside to construct your vanishing points. So this is gonna be slightly diverging ever so slightly that way and then slightly converging on the other side. These are just laws of perspective for drawing 3D objects on a 2D plane. Again, Thomas Glenn, I dropped the 100 bucks and I'm studying his perspective course. I think he's much further along than me, obviously, but I just wanna show you. All right, so the next thing I would do, and he has videos on all this stuff, but I just wanna demonstrate somebody else who's maybe not like complete freak on perspective and fanatic doing something similar. And again, this is that line, I'm missing it actually. So you basically cut the ellipse in with three lines going this way and then where these points come tangent, that's gonna be my other receding vanishing points going this way. And I know that people, there's like drawbox.com. I've actually done a lot of that stuff. It's like the 3000 box challenge or something like that, where you just churn out loads and loads of boxes as quick as possible. And it's actually good practice to sort of get familiar with 3D space, but this is a little bit more controlled technique. All right, so now I have a basically a square in perspective using ellipse with no vanishing points, just using principles of perspective. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer this width, which is the overall height of the cylinder. Um, let me just, I know you can measure it, or do it visually. I'll just double check since I'm on on a demo here, so that was a whoa, way low. Quarter inch or more, three eighths inch off, so that's not good. Double check this a second time. All right, so that's looking good. Let me extend my vertical up. So this is the point I am shooting for, so that's the major axis of the ellipse turned on its side vertically, and then, um, I'll draw the major axis of the top ellipse up here. I'm trying to look at the page. I'm just drawing a news on newsprint, 18 by 24 inch newsprint, and I'm looking at the tops and sides of my page as my vertical and horizontal references. Although now that I'm looking at it, my page is on a slight tilt. So now I'm just using the interior parts of the ellipse to just draw basically the locations of where this major axis is gonna go. There and there are the points. And then this top ellipse needs to be narrower than that. So I'm just gonna pull it in a slight bit and it could be 
really any dimension as long as it's smaller. The, the closer you get to this width, the flatter the perspective is. So I'm just giving it a fairly moderate perspective. Um, and let me just, you don't have to construct like a whole rectangle. You could just draw the ellipse freehand. I just find that this creates a little bit more accurate for me. But you need to do both. You need to learn how to just draw it without any construction lines too. So I know that that point is coming roughly in there. Um, so this part's gonna be flatter of the ellipse. And then this part is going to violently arc around. And I'm just gonna sort of mirror that ellipse. So I'm basically just constructing a cylinder in perspective using ellipses. And then I'm building off that cylinder a cube using just the dimension of the major axis as my height. And this ellipse comes this way. All right. And now I want to transfer these points up into a cube in perspective, or a square in perspective on that cylinder. So I'm just gonna move these up, move that. I hope you can start seeing the plane develop on this cylinder. Oh, I'm leaning way over, so this line is getting pretty funky. All right. So if you cannot have a camera in your way while you're drawing and be perpendicular to your picture plane, not at an angle, that always helps. All right, so those are my planes of the cube, but where do they start and stop? I'm gonna use these as my transfer angles. So those are transfer points to locate on the ellipse. So. Again, I'm using these tangents of the ellipse here and here. And perspective is telling me that this angle is going to be slightly more bent. If anything, it can't be diverging, but it's slightly converging. So here to here, oh, and I missed it actually. It's a little bit more like that. As you can see, that's an eighth inch off, but that stuff starts adding up and you're like, why my, why my perspective look terrible? It's because your eighth inch, the line was diverging by an eighth of an inch. And seriously, that's kind of a lot in this, this world. So let's find that construction line. So I'm locating these points. So I'm got, getting this plane corralled. Basically this needs to be slightly, these need to be slightly converging somewhere back in that direction, but they can't be going that and that away. So I'll locate this. So this tangent is gonna be coming through here. Connecting with that point running tangent along that ellipse. And then now I've pretty much got the cube. Um, this is gonna be coming here, locate that there. This back point connecting over with that. And if things are lining up, you should be almost good to go. I'm gonna switch to this red Prismacolor, and I think it's good practice to not use a pencil, just use a marker and draw fairly big. So again, this is an eight inch cube. You can't do that in a sketchbook. I'm just doing it on a big sheet of paper, drawing directly freehand with no ruler, no compass, all by eye. I actually just changed my mind. I am going to darken this in in two phases. I'm gonna use a 55 Tombow 
for phase one. So I'm gonna restate these lines. And again, this is just a process of creating hierarchy of line weights. I'm gonna actually leave that line the way it is and all the other lines will be slightly darker. And this is a principle, Thomas Glenn talks about this and he studied with some guys from the Russian Academy, oops, I missed that, who basically in, in the year 2023, the St. Petersburg Academy of Fine Art in Russia has more or less the best draftsman in the world. I mean, there's I studied in New York with with some good portrait painters and stuff, but I think the Russians really kept their tradition alive. And he studied with a guy from the St. Petersburg Academy and while well, he lived in Florence or something. I, I couldn't get really get the perfect information what he was saying. But anyways, this is that back construction line. I'll just dot it out for you. So now we got basically a perfect cube. And this is the drawing through the cube as if it was made of glass, as if you had x-ray vision, freehand with no ruler. And again, so last thing I want to say for aerial perspective, you've got closest edge, number one. The next closest edge is here, number two. And then the third closest edge in 3D space is here. And the fourth closest edge is there. So that's the most distant edge is that far number four. So in order to state these in aerial perspective, you can just use a hierarchy of line weights. I'm going to emphasize this near edge with red to pull it forward and darken it. I'll go over it twice. And then from here to there, I'll taper the red off. Oops. Basically you're just creating a transition from numbers one to four in terms of emphasis of line weight. I'll even pull this one up with a super fat line. All right, so that's my near edge. You can do this in black and white. I'm just exaggerating it for the sake of the picture. And then these ones back here are gonna be the lightest. So you can kind of use something in that range. This one, slightly darker. This one even darker, and then this one the darkest. So I got one, two, three, four. Because how are you pictorially going to move back in space if they're all the exact same line weight? It, it creates a flat dimension. And you can draw like that, obviously, and emphasize a silhouette. It's just, do you know why you're breaking a 3D rule? So this is teaching you what a quote unquote rule is, and then you can construct a cube. There you go.